G'day guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a really exciting video because I'm lucky enough to be able to bring you guys the unboxing and setting up of my brand new projector from BenQ. About a month ago, BenQ actually reached out to me and asked me if I would like to try one of their 4K laser projectors, in particular, the LK936ST. And for any of you who've looked into golf projectors um, or projectors in general, will know that this model is the holy grail of golf sim projectors. It is the world's first projector to have an actual golf mode built into it. I just wanna say a big thank you to Debbie, Wendy, and Danielle from BenQ for helping me get this product so I can bring you these videos. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity given to me by BenQ to be able to bring you guys this projector. So as most of you know, this channel actually started because I was getting projector interference after the 4.3 update from the Garmin R10. So I made a video about a Faraday cage and how R10 users in particular could fix the projector interference that they were getting. And that was the intent of my channel. My channel was always about helping users on how to optimize their setup to get the most out of it. So I feel very privileged and honored to be given this opportunity from BenQ. So in today's video, I'm gonna unbox the projector we're gonna go over specs, we're gonna go over features, and then I'm gonna actually set it up in my room. And from there, I'm gonna do a direct comparison to my current projector, which is the Optoma GT 1080 HDR. This is a great projector, and it served me very well. It is a fantastic projector. However, this BenQ LK936ST is the holy grail of golf sim projectors. I'm really excited to see the difference between the BenQ and the Optoma. So without further ado, let's open this thing up. Let's have a look what you get inside the box. Okay, so jumping right in, we're just gonna open the box now. I have pre-cut the, uh, the tape that came on. Um, first off, you're gonna get your instruction booklet and some batteries in there just for the remote. Uh, you get your power cable in the box. So you actually get an HDMI cable in the box, which is quite nice because a lot of the times when you buy a product like this, you don't actually get an HDMI cable and you have to go purchase one at your own cost. So that's a really nice touch. Now, because I'm setting this up in my golf sim, I actually have a 10 meter HDMI cable that I run from the roof all the way down the back to my computer um, just to keep it out of the way. But that is a really nice touch that they include an HDMI cable in the box. Okay, and then additionally to that, we've got the projector, which is gonna be quite hard to get out. So I'll get it out and I'll put it on the floor here for you guys to see. Okay, and this is a big projector compared to my other one. In saying that though, this is actually quite small for a laser 4K projector. But compared to my small Optoma 1080 HDR, this is quite a big projector. All right, so moving that box off to the side, what you're left with is your actual projector. Okay, and wow. For a 4K projector, for a laser projector, it's actually not as heavy as I thought it would be. It's, um, it is lighter than I thought it would be. So this is the BenQ LK936ST. It's a digital 4K laser projector. Okay, so let's talk about some of the specs now that you're gonna get from this BenQ. I'll pop them up on the screen now. So you're gonna get true 4K UHD resolution with 8.3 million pixels. So every little detail is gonna be there to see. You're gonna see every blade of grass. You're gonna see every detail. You're gonna get 5,100 ANSI lumens, okay? These are laser lumens. So it's gonna be super, super bright. And just to put that in perspective, my Optoma peaks out at 4,000 lumens. So it's gonna be brighter, better colors, and 4K with 8.3 million pixels. Now this is a short throw projector, okay? So like my Optoma, it's a short throw projector, which is what you want to get for a golf sim. Because if you get a standard projector, you're gonna have to put it about six meters behind you, okay? Just to fill up the screen. With a short throw projector, you can now mount this closer to the screen. So what this means is you're not gonna cast any shadows on your screen when you're hitting your golf shot. There's nothing more annoying than setting up to the ball and seeing your shadow on the screen. It really takes away from the realism of your game. Okay, let's get into some more features. So one of the coolest things about this projector is it's got horizontal and vertical lens shift. With the little flap on the top of the projector, you actually get up to 60% vertical 
and 23% horizontal relative to, to your screen size of shift. And the cool thing about this is it's actually shifting the image but it's not going to distort the image in any way. You're not doing any of the software enhancements. This is just shifting the picture. So it's gonna be 4K, 8.3 million pixels, just shifted either way. So the cool thing about that is you can now offset your projector. So you don't need to have it perfectly in the middle of your room. Okay, let's talk about the next feature, which is the 3D keystone and corner fit correction. So when you're setting up a projector in your room, if you don't have it perfectly aligned with your screen, if it's offset, you're gonna get a sort of trapezoid shape. And a lot of the cheaper projectors don't offer keystone correction. My Optoma only offers vertical keystone correction. So you have to have it perfectly centered in the room. And then because you're putting it closer to the ceiling, it offers vertical keystone correction. The BenQ offers vertical and horizontal keystone correction and also it offers corner fit. Like I said, if your projector is not perfectly centered in your room and it's on the roof, you're not gonna get a perfect rectangle on your projected image. It's gonna look more like a trapezoid. So what Keystone Correction does is it allows you to now fix up that trapezoid and turn it back into a rectangle. Further to that, with the corner fit, you can now independently adjust each corner to make it fit your screen. So now it's a lot easier to get this thing set up perfectly in your room. It's all about ease of setup. And with all these features, it just means you don't have to get your projector perfectly centered in your room to get a perfect image. You can have it offset, you can have it on the roof, and you can still get a perfect image on your screen. Okay, another feature you, you have is the digital shrink and shift without distortion. So the LK936ST digital image shrinking and shift lets installers shrink the image to 75% of the original size in half a percent increments via the software menu. And again, this is all about just making it easy to fit your screen. And the beautiful thing about this is it doesn't distort the image. And that's exactly what we want. But probably the biggest feature of this projector that I'm interested in is the golf mode feature. What BenQ have done is that they're the first company to do this is actually make a projector with golf in mind and they've actually added a golf mode to this projector. And what they say they do is they're bringing out the greens and the blues. So if you think of a golf course, the first color you think of is green because you're playing on grass. And then the next color you probably think of is blue because you've got the sky, it's a beautiful day. Um, you could be playing next to the ocean, which is blue. You, you've got water on the course. So green and blues are the main colors in golf. And so what they've done is they've almost enhanced those colors in the golf mode to make it more realistic and give it a bit more punch. Another feature of this projector is because it's a laser projector, you now get a lot more performance out of that. So my Optoma is a lamp-based projector. It uses a bulb um, to generate the light to project the image. And Optoma says in eco mode, you can get 15,000 hours of use out of that bulb. Realistically, you're gonna have it in your golf sim. You want it to be as bright as possible because you are gonna have some sort of ambient light in your room. So realistically, you're looking at about maybe 10,000 hours, if that, which is quite a lot. Comparing that to the BenQ though, which is a laser projector, you're now guaranteed 20,000 hours of maintenance-free operation, which is gonna save you on uh, you know additional costs where you've gotta buy a new bulb. The other thing I'm really excited about with this projector is that they are designed with a sealed laser module. So this laser module inside this projector is IPX5 certified against dust. So what that means is in my garage, it's dusty. And generally where golf sims are set up, it is dusty like sheds and places like that. But what this means is you've now got a sealed unit. There's no dust that's gonna get into that laser and destroy the laser or make anything project onto your image that you don't want. So that's really, really exciting. So additionally to that, there are a lot more features with this projector. Make sure you check out the website. I'll link the website in the description below. Those are just some of the features, okay? This thing is feature packed. If you think it's in a projector, this thing's got it. Let's have a look at the ports at the back and let's see what you get. So on the left-hand side, you get two HDMI inputs, one with audio return. They are HDCP 2.2 ports. You've got HD base T if you're looking to potentially do some network activity, not something I'm gonna be using in my golf sim. 
So you've got your SPDIF audio out port, which like I said, is capable of the Dolby 5.1. If you're gonna be using this as a home theater projector, that's something that's really cool. And potentially if you want to get surround sound in your golf sim, then that is gonna be very useful. You've got a remote in and out port, you've got a display port, you've got a 3D VESA in port, an RS-232 port, a LAN port, you've got an audio out, 3D VESA out, and you've got a 12 volt trigger there. The other thing you get is a little Kensington lock um, port just on the bottom left. If you were gonna use this in a room where you wanted this to be secure, you can put you can use that Kensington lock. If you're gonna be using this as a home theater projector, it's got all the bells and whistles to do so. Okay, so looking around the side of the projector, you actually get some buttons on the side. So if you lose your remote or if you, uh, don't want to use your remote, you have the option of using these buttons on the side, which is good. Okay, and that's gonna basically go over everything that I wanted to go over. Like I said, definitely check this out on the website. This thing has so many features, I can't cover them all in this video, we'd be here all day. So let's get this thing set up and let's see how it looks on the screen. Okay, so we're back over at the computer now. Setting this thing up is actually quite simple and BenQ give you a lot of tools on their website to help you set this up correctly. So we're gonna jump over to the website now and we're gonna go over some of the tools that they give you to be able to set this thing up correctly the first time. All right, so the first place you wanna go, and I'll link this in the description, is projectorcalculator.benq.com. And what you're gonna find is BenQ's own projector calculator. So essentially what you've got is the white space being your room, looking at it from a side view, and then you've got looking at it from a front view, the white space being your screen size, and the purple space being the projected image and the dark purple box being the projector. So what you've got is your units. So if you wanna do this in inches or you wanna do it in millimeters, I'm in Australia, so I'm gonna choose millimeters. From there, you go installation type. We're gonna be doing this from the ceiling. And then what you do is punch in your room dimensions, okay? So uh, for instance, my room height is 2,700 millimeters. My width is 5,500 millimeters and then the length is also 5,500, okay? From there, you pull down your uh, model if you've got a model type, or you can just go straight to the name. In this case, we're gonna go straight to the name because we know exactly what projector we have. It's the LK936ST. And so you select that from the drop-down box. From there, it's gonna pre-populate the lens, and then you can select the aspect ratio. So this is a big thing when setting up your golf sim. Before you even get your projector, before you even set up any part of your sim, the biggest thing you wanna think about is aspect ratio. And what aspect ratio is gonna determine is how big your screen is. So you're talking about how wide your screen's gonna be and how tall your screen's gonna be because you want the image to fit on your screen completely. If you look at my earlier videos before I got this BenQ, my projector had a space at the top where there was no image projected. And that's because my screen is not a 16 by nine screen, okay? It's not a 16 by 10 screen. It's closer to a four by three, um, but it's not a four by three. The reason for this is because when I was first building this golf sim, I was gonna run everything in 16 by nine. But when I did that, I figured that my screen width would have to be seriously wide for me to actually fill the, the space um, to the roof. So what I did instead is I opted to come up with a compromise where I knew I was gonna have a bit of blank space at the top and I was happy to do so because what I thought from my sim is if I make it a 16 by nine and actually have the width what it is now, if I do any flop shots, any high shots, they're gonna go over the golf sim. So I just opted to make it tall and deal with that blank space. What you actually can do, and I'm gonna show you in this video, is you can actually fill that space. You can actually use your NVIDIA graphics card to fill that blank space and get a complete image on your projector. But I just thought I'd point out, when you're setting up your golf sim, the most important thing you gotta try and figure out is aspect ratio, because that goes back to your planning phase. How big are you gonna make your actual enclosure to determine your screen size? Because you want this image projected onto it to fill the screen. You want it to look good. Okay, let's head back over to the BenQ website. So from there, we've got our room size, um, we've got the model, we've got the aspect ratio. Now, another cool thing about this projector is it natively has 16 by 10. So what that means is now you're gonna be able to make your screen that little bit taller. 
Okay, so that is really cool. Not a lot of projectors have 16 by 10 as an option. This one does have it built in natively, which is really cool. So next thing you wanna enter is your screen size. You can enter in a diagonal measurement, corner to corner, or you can enter in your height or your width. And it's gonna pre-populate those based on this 16 by nine aspect ratio. Now, there's no option for custom, but we can do a custom ratio, which is what I'm gonna show you later in the video. So what we're gonna do now is determine the screen size. So if your screen size is 16 by nine perfectly, or one of these other options, then you would follow the process as per these directions. You would put in the diagonal measurement, and it would pre-calculate the other things, or you could put in your height and your width, and then it would calculate it that way. For the way I'm going to set this up, because I'm gonna be using a custom aspect ratio, the only number I need to be concerned about is the height of the screen. So this is where you get your tape measure out, and you actually measure the height of your impact screen. So in my case, it's 2450 mil. Now you push tab, and that's gonna adjust exactly how far back you need to have the projector to fill the screen vertically. Okay, so once you populate the height of your screen, as you can see, the width is pre-populated. Now, if I had a perfect 16 by nine enclosure, that would be the exact width of my screen. My screen is only roughly 3,500 mil, okay, or 3.5 meters. So what that means is my screen, when I set this up and I put it in that 16 by nine aspect ratio, it's gonna fill the height of the screen vertically, but the width is gonna to be too wide. And that's where I'm gonna do that custom um, aspect ratio in the NVIDIA graphics card. Okay, another thing you can do in this tool is you can also actually drag and drop where you're gonna place the projector in your room. So if you wanted to offset the projector, you can put it closer to the ceiling and then you can actually see, are you gonna be able to get your image where you want it relative to your projector location? So in this case, I would have to have the projector located because of the height that I want my projector to be, I'm gonna have to have it closer to the center of my room to then get the image projected where I want it to be. What you gotta remember is that lens shift option is not a perfect square, okay? So if you were to mount your projector right in the center of your room and hang it down, you would never do this because you're gonna get shadowing and you're also gonna probably hit it with your golf club. But if you were gonna do that, mount it on a desk or something, that would give you the maximum flexibility to move it left or right with that lens shift. If you wanted to have it mounted on your ceiling, which is what 99% of golfers are gonna do, it's actually gonna restrict, because now you have to move your image lens shift down, it's actually gonna restrict that left and right movement. And that's what the, these lines are showing you here. So you're restricted in how much you can move it because you're mounting it closer to the ceiling and using that vertical lens shift. It'll give you all the measurements down the bottom. So it's got the width of your room and it's telling you you can exactly where you can mount it. So it's very in depth, it's a really good tool. For the purposes of my build and me mounting this, I've just got to enter in my height, which was 2450 mils, push tab, and it's gonna tell me the distance to screen from my projector I need is 3528. For me personally, 3528 for me is a minimum. So what I found when I mounted this, because I'm mounting this to the battens on my roof, what I found was you have to mount the lens of the projector at that distance. Okay, so I mounted the projector at that distance, I set it up and the script, the image was actually too short vertically. So I just had to move it back one. So if you're gonna do this, when you set it up, even though it says, hey, you can mount it this distance, I would add a little bit of fat onto that because what this projector gives you is a zoom function and it doesn't uh, degrade the picture, the image quality. It's got a zoom function on there. So there's a bit of flexibility, but just give yourself a little bit of fat when mounting this. Okay, so that's the projector tool and I highly recommend going through that process because it really makes it simple. It's a very in-depth tool and it gives you exact measurements. Okay, so I have this thing now mounted on my ceiling. I'll put up some pictures now. It was a really easy process. I just used a cheap projector mount from Amazon. It came in two days and I've got this thing mounted. Okay, so without further ado, let's turn this thing on and I'm gonna show you exactly how to resize the image. Okay guys, so when you're initially setting up this projector, the biggest thing, like I said, if you've got a custom resolution like I have, is to fill the screen vertically. So you have to have the projector far enough back 
to where you get that screen vertically filled. Good way to check if your projector is actually filling that vertical space once you have it set up in your room is if you go on the remote, we'll head over to the menu. We're gonna go to installation. And if you click on this test pattern, we wanna turn this on. Okay, once you have that test pattern up, you're basically gonna see a grid. And this is gonna be in a 16 by nine format because that's what we have selected on our projector. And the main thing with this is to make sure you have a little bit of fat added in with your size. So what I mean by a little bit of fat is you can see that mine isn't perfectly on the top and the bottom. If you look at it, at the top, it's just slightly over the top and the bottom's pretty much lined up. So you can always bring the image in slightly. You can't push the image out. So you can't make those bigger, but you can bring them in slightly. So that's why I say just add like a little bit, maybe an inch or so of fat um, onto, you know, top and bottom. So that's how you know you've got your vertical space filled. This test pattern is really good. What you will see though, is over the sides now, um, you can see that I actually have too much image in the width, okay, on both sides. And that's because I'm about to create a custom aspect ratio. Biggest thing to know, custom aspect ratio, top and bottom filled, and that's it. You can do the rest with software, as long as you have an NVIDIA GPU. Once you've done that, it's gonna be too wide because you're running an aspect ratio that is too wide for your screen. So then what you do is you come over to computer. Okay, so jumping into my desktop, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to right click, I'm gonna go down to show more options, and I'm gonna pull up this NVIDIA control panel. Give it a little bit of time and it'll eventually pop up. And it's actually defaulted to change resolution. And that's exactly what we want to do. So you can see my custom resolution that I've put in there already, but what it's most likely going to default to is either the aspect ratio of your laptop or the aspect ratio of the projector itself. So this is a native 4K projector. So it's most likely going to be defaulted to this uh, 3840 by 2160. So 3840 by 2160, what does that actually mean? So this is saying that there's 3,840 pixels across and there's 2,160 pixels vertically. So as we know, we fit our screen vertically. So we don't need to change this 2160 at all. What we do need to adjust though, is this 3840. Because our image is too wide, we need to bring that in a little bit. So to do that, all you do is click on customize. Customize the image. Now, what you've got to figure out is actually how wide you want your image to be. There's multiple ways to do this. You can literally just start typing in random numbers and hope to get it correct, but there's actually a mathematical way on how to do this. It's a pretty simple mathematical equation. All you're doing is cross multiplying and dividing. So if I pull up a calculator just on my phone, so what I have here is just the basic cross multiply and divide. The uh, 3,550 is my screen width. The 2,450 is my screen height. 2,160 is the pixels uh, vertically. And then we're gonna solve for the horizontal pixels that we need to put up. So I'm just gonna do this cross multiply and divide. It's as simple as multiplying those two numbers together, which gives us seven and a half million roughly. So 7,668 million. From there, you divide that number by the 2,000 450, and that's gonna give me 3,129. So round that up to 3,130, and that's gonna give you a really good starting point for your horizontal resolution. What I did was I got that number and then I just adjusted it slightly. I added on a bit of fat just so I could bring the sides in and get the corners perfect. Okay, so then you just simply click create custom resolution and type in the numbers that you want. Now what you'll find is, what you might find is what happened to me is when I tried to create a custom resolution, so let's go 3160, I think it was. And if I push test, it's gonna come up with a test failed error message. Just click okay, that's fine. And then push cancel and okay. And what's what it does is it actually pops up in your section just here, which you can then click on. I'm not gonna apply it because I've already figured out my custom resolution that I like and I've got my screen how I want it set up. 
but that's basically how you do it. If it doesn't go into this section, just simply do it again. Simply go through the exact same process, push custom, and then create the resolution again. 3160, you will get the same error message, but once you do this a couple of times, it will eventually pop up in this window down here that you can click on. That's the way I found, for, for whatever reason, it wouldn't allow me to do that uh, natively on my computer. I did it a couple of times and it worked. So just keep doing it until it lets you do it. Okay, and then once you have it where you want it, so for me, I had to adjust mine to 3000 by 2160. So once you have it where you want it, and it doesn't have to look perfect, and again, I would err uh, on the side of going just over the edges of your screen. I've adjusted this to 3000. I still then bring it in slightly using my corner correct, and I'll show that in a second. Okay, so once you've done that, it should look pretty good. Um, in my case, I've already done my corner correct, so it does look perfect. But what you might see on your screen, if you go into the menu section, go into installation, you've got this option called corner fit. And this is absolutely amazing because what this allows you to then do is to adjust each corner independently from one another. Okay, so we can move this over, we can move it slightly down. You can adjust these things independently and you can get each corner looking absolutely perfect. So like I said, I had my screen size a little bit bigger so then I could go in and do corner fit and just bring everything slightly in and line it up perfectly in line with my corners. What this will highlight to you, if you have a custom screen like I do, this will highlight the fact that even though you think your screen is perfectly square, it's actually not. And in my case, the top right hand corner, it's actually not pulled back far enough. And that's why the image there goes onto the black part of the screen. So it really highlights the fact that even though you try and get your screen perfectly uh, rectangle, it's not. Okay, so once you follow these steps, you should have a perfect looking screen. The other options you have just going into the menu, you've got this image resizing option. Okay, and this is what I was talking about, your digital shrink and zoom. You can actually go in and use these and it won't affect the quality of your picture. So that's really cool as well. You do have your 3D keystone correct. This is, again, if you don't have your image perfectly centered, this is where you can have your vertical keystone correction, which this projector automatically does. And then you can do your horizontal keystone correction. So what that is, I'll show you, I'll edit this now. You can actually shift your image horizontally. So if your projector is not perfectly aligned with your impact screen, you're gonna have to use this horizontal keystone correct to get it looking like a rectangle. In my case, it's slightly off to the right, so I have to set it up as one. Now, this is 3D keystone correct, so you do have this option as well, which I didn't touch on in the first part of the video. You can actually rotate your screen as well. Okay, so this is where you can do your portrait mode. And you can actually shift the image all the way into a portrait view. So it's pretty incredible. So lots of options, lots of software options, which again is just making this really, really easy to set up, refine and look perfect. Okay, that is the installation and talking through all the features and specs. Now I'm gonna show you a comparison and this comparison absolutely blew me away. So what I'll do now is I'll put up some images from the Optoma. And what you've got to remember is these projectors are coming from two different price points, okay? So the Optoma in Australia, you're gonna get for about $1,600, um, $16 to $2,000. So this BenQ is obviously on the higher end of the spectrum in the vicinity of 9,000 Australian dollars. But what you get from this is just so much more. And my wife put it perfectly, she said, when you go to the optometrist, you think you can see perfect and you're going around, you're driving your car, you're, you're reading things, you're watching TV, you think you can see perfectly. You go to the optometrist, you try on a pair of glasses and your eyes are open to the world and you go, wow, I actually couldn't read those street signs. Um, I had to sit closer to the TV because it's amazing what you don't know before you have glasses to after you wear glasses. It's incredible. You think you can see what you realize is you actually can't see. And that's what you kind of get when you go from a lower spec projector to one of these 4K laser projectors is you realize 
wow, this thing is absolutely incredible. So what I'll do now is I'll put up some comparison pictures and I'll show you exactly what it looks like from the Optoma to the BenQ. As you can see, pretty uh, substantial difference between the two. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, let's head out to GS Pro. I'm gonna put some comparisons up. I'm gonna be using the Georgia 3s, which is the official par three course of Augusta National. You will be seeing this par three competition in a few weeks at Augusta. I'm gonna be going to the eighth and ninth hole of the Augusta National par three course. And we're gonna check out a comparison and see how different the Optoma looks to this new BenQ. And this is gonna show why this projector is the best golf projector you can get by far.
All right, guys, as you can see, the difference that you get from this projector is absolutely incredible. I just want to touch on some of the things as well that with this projector. The biggest thing is obviously the picture quality. The picture quality, the, the colors, the detail is just absolutely incredible. The brightness is another thing. The brightness is unreal. I mean, I'm, I'm shooting this in the day. I've got light bleed coming through from my garage door. I've got light bleed coming through from a window behind me. There's a lot of light in this room as well as the light that I'm using to light my face. This projector is absolutely incredible. I can turn all the lights on in my garage and this thing still looks incredible. So the output, that 5,100 lumens, that's a big deal. The other point I wanna to touch on is the ease of, of setup. Okay, so the ease of setup to this thing is just, it's just so easy. You go to that tool on the BenQ website, follow it, it'll tell you exactly where to put it in your room. Even if you don't get it right, you've got, a, a plethora of software options to correct your image size. I'm not an expert on projectors. I've only started using projectors since I've done my golf sim, and this projector was so much easier to set up than my Optoma. Again, I really feel honored and privileged to be able to bring this to you. Thank you to BenQ. What this has done is just transform my space. I mean, it, it's made it into a 4K space, which I didn't think was gonna happen in the near future, and now it has happened. So I can't thank BenQ enough for giving me this opportunity to bring this to you guys. If you're in the market for a projector, definitely check them out. There are a number of options in each price category, and the service they provide is fantastic. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed that. Stay tuned, I've got a lot of good videos coming up. I'm gonna be playing the Masters now in 4K, thanks to my BenQ projector, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.